Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, I wanna to introduce to you the skeletal system. Now the skeletal system is a collection of 206 bones, at least in the adult, that play really important roles when it comes to protection, storage, and support. Now, how do bones play all these important roles? Well, when it comes to protection, for example, it protects underlying structures or organs. When it comes to support, it's gonna be supporting the weight of the body and also the muscles that are attached to it to allow for us to move. And it plays an important role for storage because it's storing important minerals like calcium and phosphate. So when we look at the skeletal system, you can divide it into a number of different ways and you can categorize the bones a number of different ways as well. So I'm gonna show you these different ways of categorizing bones. First way is dividing the skeletal system into what we call the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. So I've drawn up my little skeleton here and you can see I've highlighted different colors. All those bones in black are the axial skeleton. It's basically going to be the skull, the rib cage, the sternum, and the vertebral column. And the appendicular skeleton is everything else, basically everything that holds and moves the limbs, or the limbs themselves, I should say. So if we want to be more specific, 206 bones for this whole skeleton, how many bones in the axial skeleton? Well, what we can do is we can say that if the axial skeleton is made up of the skull and made up of the hyoid made up of the vertebrae made up of something called when we look at it it's called the ossicles of the middle ear ossicles of the middle ear it's made up of the sternum and rib cage now how many bones associated with each of these when we look at the skull there's 22 bones the hyoid one bone the vertebrae, 26 bones. The ossicles, six bones. The sternum, one bone. And the rib cage, we have 24 bones. Now, if you were to add them up, what you're hopefully going to find is that this equals to 80 bones. 80 bones of the axial skeleton. So that leaves us 126 bones for the appendicular skeleton. So what bones are part of the appendicular skeleton? Well, it's basically, basically going to be the shoulder girdle the arms, the hands, the pelvic girdle, the legs, and the feet. Now how many bones associated with each of these? Well, when we look at the shoulder, it's gonna be, or the shoulder girdle, it's gonna be four bones. When we look at the arms, it's gonna be six bones. When we look at the hands, it's 54 bones. A lot of bones for the hands and wrist. The pelvis, six bones. The legs, what we're gonna have a look at is that there's eight bones for the legs, don't forget the patella, and feet, there's gonna be 52 bones. Now hopefully, if we were to add these up, it's gonna equal 126 bones. That is one way of dividing the bones up into axial and appendicular, but there's other ways. We can have a look at bones and divide them up or classify them in accordance to their shape. So, what type of shapes do we have in regards to bones? Well, a couple of things, a couple of ways we can do it. First of which is, you can have a look at what we call flat bones. So the skull is an example of a flat bone. Let's write flat bone. Like I said, the skull and the sternum, they're really good examples of flat bones. What do they do? Well, flat bones protect underlying structures or organs. What are the types of bones? There's long bones. These are bones that are longer than they are wider, unsurprisingly. That includes the humerus and the tibia, uh, the humerus, the radius, the ulna, the femur, the tibia, the fibula, for example. They're all long bones. And what do they do? They provide support, support and mobility, so movement. And like I said, an example of this is the humerus. There's also irregular bones. That's another type. And a regular bone are bones that don't really fit into any other category. And they're strange in shape. So because they're all different in their shape, they're all different in their function. So an example of this can be the vertebrae. Other types include short bones. Now these are bones that are pretty much as wide as they are long and usually includes the bones of the wrist, so the carpals, and the ankle, the feet, the tarsals. And so, I'll write carpals here. 
And their important role is that there's many of them, first of all, and they have a lot of articulating surfaces. Because they've got this square shape, they're gonna have articulation, so one bone talking to another bone here, and here, and here, and here. And what this does is it provides stability within that particular joint or region. And the last type is sesamoid bones. And sesamoid bones include that of the patella or kneecap. And what they do, so we'll write that down, patella, and what they do is they have tendons embedded in them. Really important. So you can classify bones according to shape. But again, it's not the only way we can classify bones. The last way I want to tell you is we can classify bones according to more so their microscopic anatomy. And this is where we're moving on to this image over here. You can break this, this type of bone up into what we call cortical bone and what we call trabecular bone, which is also known as cankylous bone, which is also known as spongy bone. A lot of wonderful different names. So you've got cortical bone, you've got trabecular bone. So I've cut into a bone here and you can see that on the most outer surface of that bone, you've got really tightly packed condensed bone, that's that cortical bone. And you can see the cortical bone is made up of these, what look like circles here, and these circles as an entire unit are called osteons. Importantly, the osteons are made up of all these concentric rings, like a tree. These rings are called lamella, which means plate. So you've got multiple lamella packed on top of each other and then right in the middle you've got this little central canal and this central canal contains blood vessels and nerve fibers. Really important when it comes to being able to feed that bone tissue. That's cortical bone. You can see over here we've got trabecular bone or spongy bone or cankylous bone. It's, they don't have osteons, that's an important difference, which means that central canal, which is also called the Haversian canal that contains the blood vessels, they don't have that. So the blood vessels are basically interwoven between and it diffuses out nutrients to be able to feed the cells and tissue underlying trabecular bone. How do we make bone is the next question. Well, we make bone by a number of different cell types. Bone is connective tissue, really important. And so, because bone is connective tissue, it's made up of cells, gels, and fibers. Let's write that down. It's connective tissue, it's made up of cells, gels, and fibers. And it's the cells that are important because they lay down the gels and fibers and produce them. What are the cell types? All right, first is there's what we call osteo, progenitor cells then we've got osteoblasts osteocytes osteoclasts all right first thing the prefix the start of the word osteo 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 it all means bone site means cell Blast, this is how I think about it. Blast, think of the B in blast for build. This is what builds bone. Think of the C in clasts for crush. It breaks bone down because bone is constantly being rebuilt throughout your entire life. You bounce up and down, do exercise and move. You want to build bone. If you sit there and don't use it or go up into the International Space Station, for example, it breaks it down, crushes it. Progenitor, progenitor, to be able to produce offspring. These are stem cells. And so what basically happens is osteoprogenitor cells will turn into osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are the builders of bone. So these are cells that lay down the gels and fibers, just like a builder would, laying down bricks and mortar, bricks and mortar or concrete. And what it does is it builds bone around it. And then what happens is the osteoblast gets stuck in this bone that it's built and it matures, and the osteoblast matures into something called an osteocyte. That's the mature osteoblast, and they just stand there like a mature person would do and just watch and make sure everything's okay. If there's any problems, it will call in more osteoblasts, or if it needs to break things down, 
it will call in osteoclasts. Osteoclasts are a different cell lineage from these others and they eat bone and release all that calcium and phosphate for example. So what we have gone through is a quick run through and introduction to the skeletal system.